All right, so now that we have our, you know, our general idea down for what we're going to be working on, and we have a few uh, really rough uh, blocks just giving us the general space, the first way that we're going to look at doing this is uh, just hopping straight over into the uh, the paint tab, and we're going to do some sculpting. But this isn't going to be sculpting in the same sense that uh, you know you would sculpt on a character or sculpt for any kind of details. Really, for the most part, what we're going to be doing here is using the move tool uh, within our sculpting palette, and we're just going to be uh, using this as kind of a soft move so that we can um, you know more quickly get everything into place so you know with this tool I can just really easily start kind of pushing and pulling uh, vertices and polygons around in order to get uh, kind of where I'm going now I know that I want uh, kind of some aft space here for this engine area so I'm gonna just take it and pull some of these pieces out let's use a bit bigger brush here uh, so this is going to be where I want my engines to fit and I'm just going to be using a combination of the move tool directly and then holding down the shift key and turning it into the smooth tool uh, and that's going to allow me to uh, take and uh, really quickly get this uh, formed so that I have uh, kind of just a general idea of where I'm going to be going so kind of like the back here to taper just a little bit um, pull this down a little bit and I want I know I want this front end here to have uh, a bit of a lift off the ground um, where the cockpit is going to be uh, really kind of swept forward and I'm gonna have a lot of visibility around there between uh, having kind of some surrounding glass and then having the uh, the heads-up displays that are those uh, kind of half domes that were in the in the uh, the scale pieces there, uh, those are going to be uh, giving my my pilot and my co-pilot a lot of uh, good visibility. So let's take and again, I'm just going to be really quick and dirty with this. This is not uh, again, I'm not looking for uh, good topology or anything like that. I'm just looking for getting um, you know kind of the volume, the idea of the space that I need here. All right, and this is just going to be one of the ways that you can do this. Now, if uh, if you're less comfortable with using the sculpting tools, uh, we'll look at some other ways that you can do this here in a moment. But um, I find this to be a, a good way sometimes in order to get the the shape I want. And usually, I will use kind of a a combination of uh, of techniques in order to get all of my pieces um, kind of uh, worked out. So. You know, for something like this that's the main body, maybe I'm going to be using, uh, you know, this kind of a technique more. Uh, but then maybe for the drive pods, I'll use a little bit more of a polygonal technique or a mixture of polygons and sub Ds. Uh, I find that the other good way, another good way that we'll look at here in a moment, is to use uh, subdivision surfaces and then uh, a very low poly count, but we'll be using edge weighting in order to uh, kind of solidify the overall shape and get an idea as to where we're going to be going. So I kind of like this idea here where I've got, see this kind of forward area. This is going to be kind of our, our, our cockpit area. And then let's kind of pull this up a little bit. And then it just kind of tapers off back there. Uh, we still have plenty of extra space on the sides here where we can have, uh, you know, open rooms. Um, for, you know, if we need area for the crew to sleep or eat or whatever. Um, I think that ought to work pretty well. So let's make sure that we've got enough room for this drop pod. And we'll just kind of fill that out. And now as I kind of get a little bit more, um, a little bit more of the sense of the form here, um, I'm going to need to also hop back over into my regular modeling tools, which we'll do here in just a second, so that I can see kind of where everything is fitting. And I can make adjustments and tweak and and go from there. So let's hop back over to model here. You can see that I do have uh, kind of enough space for this uh, for this pod here, um, or the area where the, uh, the the drop bay is going to be, but it's not quite enough. So what I'm going to do is I still am using my uh, my move tool from my sculpting brushes here, but I'm doing it now in my orthographic views, and that will allow me to kind of get bigger areas and adjust them a little bit more on mass. I think something like that is going to give me a little bit more space for what I need. Um, and I've got the uh, the drop pod 
box sitting right on the ground here. So I know that if I adjust around it a little bit and it kind of pops out, that's fine because I can move that up and that's not going to be uh, much of an issue. So let's go ahead back here and I want to kind of move out these guys a little bit. So something like that. And then I want to check out the front here as well, where I've got this canopy because I don't want it to be super overdone, but I do want it to, uh, want to make sure that I have plenty of space for it. Maybe something like that. And uh, from here, you may also want to, um, you know, take and convert into sub Ds, depending on the form that you're looking for. So I'm going to sub D this. Um, now, even though I'm in sub Ds, though, I'm still not sculpting on anything beyond the uh, just the basic uh, polygons and vertices. Basically, I'm moving vertices around uh, at this point uh, because I don't have multi-resolution on it. I'm not going to turn on multi-resolution at this stage because I really have no need uh, for working on that many polygons. And this is going to allow me to keep this workflow really fast um, and not have to worry about um, you know, any extra polygons or any extra details getting sculpted in there that are uh, more dense than my basic mesh. All right, so I think something like that. I think that's kind of taking this about as far as I feel like taking it um, with this method. Now, um, what we are going to do now is let's look at some other uh, some other options that we have. So, so right now I have these drive pods, and they're they're just cubes. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use those cubes as a general volume. I know that I want to fit those in there, um, but I'm going to actually just leave those visible and work in the background, or leave those in the background rather. So one thing I notice here is that these are are too far forward now uh, and I think at this point I want to slide them back so that they kind of uh, fit the center of gravity of the ship a little bit better I think something like that now this is probably going to taper a little bit more um, so I think something like that is going to be better and maybe move them up just a little bit okay so now let's hop over into uh, into this view and I'd accidentally created a little cube there so I'm going to get rid of that uh, and this one I'm actually going to take and I'm going to start with a, basically as low a polygon count as I can so uh, my cube is going to be really just that it's just going to be a cube here uh, this is going to allow me a little bit more freedom to work in the space um, and make make changes and adjustments as I go. So uh, what I would like to do with this is um, I kind of want to create a bit of, um, instead of just a general block, I want to have this uh, kind of sweep in on the top just a little bit and, um, and maybe taper a little bit on the back end. So let's do, I think that works. So now I can hide this pods uh, layer and I can work from here. So now with this way of working, I'm going to be looking at adding in a lot of edge slices, loop slices here. Um, and so I'll be selecting an edge and just uh, pressing Alt C to get the loop slice tool. And then I can work this in kind of one uh, one piece at a time here. So I'd kind of like some area here where I have some big uh, thrusters on the back of this, but I want them to have a little bit of kind of housing or cowling up on top uh, to give them a little bit of shielding. So I'm going to set that part in a little bit like that. And here on the front, what I would like to do is just take and uh, and get a little bit more aerodynamic feel. So I'm just going to pull back um, the, the front and the back edges or the top and the bottom edges rather. I think that's giving me something kind of like what I want. Um, now, the other thing that I want to see here is I want um, a little bit, like I was saying, a bit of a uh, kind of sweep on the top. So what I'm going to do is select the top pieces here and just inset them a little bit. And no, actually I don't like that, so let's back up here. I'm just going to grab this top polygon then. And we're just going to pull that in. And I think that's definitely more along the lines of what I uh, had in mind. So what I'm looking for here is I'm um, actually going to move these up a little bit. And what this is going to do is going to give me, um, you know, the feeling that these, when they're fully retracted, are going to kind of overlap the body. And it's going to make them feel a bit more like um, they're, they're a bit more integrated with the form. So what I'm going to do is gonna take these whole things and move them up in like that. And so what I want to see is just kind of a couple of different flight modes for this. So with the with the engine pods kind of retracted like this and tucked in um, 
and not pivoted at all. This is going to be kind of the the maximum speed mode where it's tucked in and it's just uh, going to move as quickly as it can. All of its thrusters and its engines are going to be facing aft so that it, you know, it's giving it its most uh, the most amount of thrust that it can here. Uh, and then I want these to be able to kind of extend outward just a little bit. And at that point, they would, oops, at that point, they would be able to pivot. So I'm just going to kind of check and see what we've got here. And I think that's going to work pretty well. So now as you continue working on forms like this, I find that it's very beneficial to use um, something that doesn't uh, get mentioned, I think, enough in, in a lot of uh, in a lot of the materials. And that's going to be um, using the silhouette mode. And I'm going to set up a viewport just to have my silhouette. So what I'm going to do is select my main items here. It's going to be my fuselage and my drive pods. And let's actually take and rename this one. Drive pods. Uh, so let's take both of these items and then I'm going to go down to the display sub tab here in my properties and we can see that there's an option here for show as silhouette. You can see in my viewport here I'm actually getting a silhouette showing up now. So basically we're not seeing any shading, any lighting, any wires. We're just getting the outline, the silhouette, right? And if this doesn't show up in your viewport, you can press the O key and under drawing and control, you'd see there's an option here for enable silhouette. And I actually want this turned off here in my main modeling viewport because I don't want to be going and toggling it on and off. But what I'm going to do is move over to my layout tab and in the layout tab, I'm going to check and make sure that silhouette is on. Now the silhouette does not work in advanced viewport, just a side note here. So this is another way that you can toggle it without having to go into that menu. So if I go between my uh, default view and my advanced viewport, you can see I can turn that on and off. But mostly I'm going to be using this layout tab uh, at this point uh, of the process just to kind of check my silhouette. So let's go ahead and hide my two bounding boxes here. And let's again press the O key and I'm going to lose my cameras, lights, texture locators, all that stuff so that I'm just seeing the, the silhouette. Okay, and actually I can also further go in here and let's get rid of the grid. So now we are just seeing that. Okay, so as I look at this from the side view and you can also kind of uh, select different views, um, it seems a little bit on the bulky side to me. What I'd kind of like to see is uh, a little bit of a sweep up here in this back area. Um, and then the uh, that way the, uh, the drop pod can actually lower even if the ship is all the way on the ground. So the, the doors would open up and the, that little drop pod would come down. Um, I like the way for the most part this is working in the front here. And I think the engines are, these drive pods are working pretty well. So with that, let's go ahead and can check our perspective view again here, kind of from the front. I kind of like it from the front. So it's giving a little bit of a sweep down. The engines are off to the side. And if those pivot, I think those are going to look really nice. Uh, so let's see if we take these and like pivot them up. I think that works pretty well. Yeah. All right. So let's hop back over now to our, uh, our paint tab. And we want to make sure that here in the paint tab, we have that silhouette turned off because we don't want to be working with the silhouette uh, when we're in here just sculpting. So now I'm going to hop back uh, to my move tool and I'm going to try just raising this up, but I don't want it to go all up there. There we go. I think something like this is more along the lines of what I had in mind. So it's kind of sweeping up. We still have kind of this lower area here, and I'm thinking I might have uh, some landing gear kind of feet coming out down here. Um, I think that's going to give me something more like uh, the general shape that I'm going for. All right, so if this doesn't work for you, if you don't like working in kind of a, a push and pull sculpting uh, workflow like this, um, I'm going to show you another way that, uh, that you can work on this. It's going to be something uh, kind of akin to what we did here to just give the general shape for the drive pods. Um, and that is going to be um, working again with low polygon, but we're going to almost immediately convert to sub D's. So what I'm going to do here is turn off symmetry. And since I have this uh, kind of general form here, I'm going to use that um, so I can get my bounding box to be pretty much the right size. Um, so let's go with something like this. And I'm going to give myself just a couple of subdivisions in each direction just to give me something to start with. Or maybe something like that. All right, and now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take and just kind of in really basic uh, polygonal 
um, modeling here just using my move tool and whatnot I'm going to take and adjust this shape just to give me a, kind of a starting point here and I'm going to take these and I'm going to use fall offs also here as well let's just use a linear fall off to kind of swing that forward Oops, looks like we've got ease in and I want ease out. There we go. Just kind of swing that part there. Uh, here on the front, let's take these and pull them back. And these vertices here and pull them back. And then on the sides, I want to get this edge and this edge. And at this point, I'll probably want to turn symmetry back on. Uh, and I want to pull these back. And then I want to get kind of the whole front edge here Oops. and just pull that back as well. And now that I have kind of just the super, super basic shape here, maybe pull those down just a little bit. Um, and pull these guys up just a little bit. Now that I have this, I'm going to go ahead and sub D this. Okay. And now I can go ahead and hide that other fuselage. And what I can do from here is I can go in really easily and add in some extra loop slices just here and there where I might need a little bit of extra geometry. Uh, but then I can also go in and start uh, playing with edge weighting. So what I'm going to do for this entire object is I'm going to set the, um, the surface here to a subdivision level of four. All right, and I'm gonna use my weight tool here. Now 20% is gonna give me uh, just a very soft sharpening, just super subtle, um, but still, you know, something, um, you know, something that's not totally soft. Um, but then I can play with that. And then if I go up to um, a, an edge weight level of 30%, that's going to give me something that's mostly sharp. So if, for example, let's take these edges down the side here, and if I set this up to 30%, it's going to give me something that's really mostly sharp here. And if I do happen to go all the way up to 40, which I'm probably going to not do in this stage, 40% um, then would give me um, essentially a, a perfectly sharp edge. So I think th I'm going to be using 30 for a lot of this. So I'm going to go through here and just kind of solidify edges where I uh, kind of want to create, um, you know, a bit more sharpness to my form. And this will allow me to go in and even though I've got the, you know, the general fluidity of sub D's here, uh, this is going to allow me to go in and uh, and get something that is kind of a hybrid of smooth and softened geometry. All right, so then also from here, I could uh, continue to use fall off. So if I turn on like a linear fall off, for example, uh, let's reverse that. And on the back here, I just kind of want to taper this in a little bit. Maybe something like that. And then I'm going to grab these polygons here and I'm going to lose the, lose that, kind of pull that in. I think something like that. And take it back. Maybe these ones back here. Take these and pull them in. Yeah, so we get a little bit more taper. A little bit cleaner line here to the ship. And what I'm going to be doing here is as I get flushing out this idea more, I'm going to be adding in a um, kind of a collar around the ship here that's going to be uh, a mount for the engines so that I can have something that they can attach to that they can pivot on. Uh, but it's not going to look as if it's eating too much into uh, the interior of the ship. So let's go ahead and Kind of just do a little bit more polishing. And really, this is just the general idea here. And as I continue to do this, uh, just throughout the process, I'm going to, at intervals, um, hop over to my Layout tab that has, um, uh, that has my silhouette in it so that I can see what's going on. And oops, you have to make sure that you, as you create new meshes, you will actually have to go to the Display tab. Make sure you turn the silhouette on. I think that's starting to come along pretty nicely. Now, as I continue to work on this, the other thing that I'll, I'll want to be looking at here is, you know, starting to take simple shapes like this, dividing them up and adding in, 
you know, maybe some more details. So, you know, perhaps here on the front, I want to take this front section here and uh, kind of bevel it in and forward just a little bit. And let's get just the boundary and soften that. And I'm not going to be adding a lot of detail any at any individual place here. And these are, for the most part, not even going to be the finished items that I'll be using for the meshes in the end. But as we're working on the concept here, this is helping me to kind of uh, further refine uh, the overall idea. So, uh, so I would recommend you kind of jump around between what works for you. Um, if you can uh, kind of use a little bit of all of the techniques, you know, a little bit of uh, soft move sculpting, uh, a little bit of sub D work, a little bit of kind of real simple block polygon work, oops, um, that will help you to be able to refine your ideas um, much more quickly. And in the end, it will get you to the, the shape and the design that you want more quickly. And then we can uh, go from there and move on to, uh, you know, creating more polished, uh, versions and then finished uh, models based off of that uh, that stuff that we've started with. So take some time, allow yourself um, iterations to be able to work on you know various versions. If something doesn't feel quite right, you know, feel free to just hide that layer, create a new empty layer, and then start a, a chunk of it from scratch. So like I kind of started mostly from scratch again on this fuselage, and I actually like this a bit more than, than the first one I'd created. Uh, from here, I'd probably go in and start doing a little bit of sculpting soft move on it uh, in order to be able to, to just to kind of uh, refine the blocking just a little bit, adding more edge loops as needed, adding more... Um, more extra subdivisions as needed to be able to put in just little bits of additional, um, you know, kind of uh, detail with, or not so much detail to the ship, but detail to the overall form. And then in the next lesson, we'll look at taking and moving that uh, that form forward a bit, refining it, and uh, and creating something that we can start to get a, a finished model out of. That does it for this one. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next one.